What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the week two edition of the cash process. I'm your host, Ben Hosler. I'm joined by the CEO himself, Anthony Carson. We are sponsored by our newest partners, Owner Box, Owners Box Fantasy. Uh, shout out to them. Um, had fun playing on their website uh, over that first weekend, Anthony. Didn't have any like crazy caches, but my core plays for Owner's Box did cash, and um, it was just fun messing around with the super flex um, and, and building a, a bunch of lineups for um, that $10, 100K prize pool tournament that they posted. So shout out to Owner's Box. We'll be doing tons of content for them throughout the season, and you can still uh, sign up using promo code KARMA at ownersbox.online and get your $500 deposit match. Um, Anthony, we need to celebrate. Okay. So I've never been one to be like cocky or like worry about other people. I kind of just stay in my lane. I do my own thing. But if your content provider did not cash week one, I, you might have to reconsider things because we do not lose week one over yes. here, Anthony. We do not lose week one. Uh, three and oh for me oh, on my core play for week one. Go ahead. You were on fire the last two years. You've done honestly, like I said, so well, the top one percentile guys out there. I mean, dude, you're right. Like Matt said, like we are walking the walk and we're going to talk the talk. I mean, when you have a successful start like that, like why not, right? Like we put in so much time, effort, energy, and heck money into what we love to do is a hobby. And some people like to do it to make some nice coin. And in fact, all of our core plays, I mean, it was amazing. All of our core plays hit very well. Um, they were very strategically hedged out with all of our guys, including our Lord and Savior, Matt, with another, I mean, I think he won another eight to $10,000 as usual. You can head over to dfskarma.com to access the same core plays that Matt's playing that Ben mentioned himself, where he's undefeated already to start the year on both websites, mine. And then you can access everything else under the sun at dfskarma.com, our projections portal, our ownership projections, our cheat sheets, which is called Final Thoughts, and all the other content um that helped propel you to success yeah it was a great week one um i don't really have else, much else to say man i mean sometimes we come on here after a really tough and lousy week and we're kind of you know talking about what we did wrong and we will do that like i'll talk about my my draft kings lineup and where i made a mistake in cash games but i had an amazing week overall with props betting fanduel tournaments on draft kings i did miss out on draft kings cash games but again ben runs the cash game core play at, at uh, gfskarma.com so with that being said ben again I'll, I'll push it back to you it's monday we're going to take a first look at this stuff every week monday morning and give you guys our first look at what, what we're looking at is value and how we're looking to build our main kind of core play uh cash roster for the week on, on all on all sites yeah, so I feel like in years past, like a lot of times we, we would be doing this maybe like Tuesday evening. So if we're going to be doing this early Monday, like this is a, a true first look, right? This is our honestly like first time I'm pulling up the the slate. You know, we don't have projections uh, yet for the slate. Those come out Tuesday afternoon on our website. So um, this is a true first look. And yeah, I don't want to like sound cocky. Like obviously I made mistakes. I had a lot of Mike Williams in tournaments. Um, that didn't work out. I swapped uh, Jahan Dotson to Randall Cobb in my cash game lineup uh, at like 10 a.m. yesterday. That uh, did not work out. But Justin Jefferson, single-digit ownership on DraftKings, that really kind of separated me. I couldn't believe uh, he was that low-owned. And I want to shout out, I don't even know who it was. I forgot to check. But someone, someone like classic, just panic after the early, early, like first half of the early games. Someone tweeted at me, Anthony. They're like, dude, why are you playing X, th this tight end in, in cash? Like, why are you playing this lame tight end in cash? Like, guy tweets at me at, like, 2.30, and then we end up smashing. So whoever that was, I know you're watching this video. I'm waiting for my I'm waiting for my apology uh, because I we— I love the trolls. Bring yeah. them out. Bring them out. Yeah, we, we played that cheap tight end so I could get 40 points from Justin Jefferson at 8% at ownership. But— um, yeah, we, we love it. love hate whatever we, we love all of the all of the comments especially here on YouTube but like you said we're gonna dive in we're just gonna look at these uh, early prices go through each position starting off at quarterback so uh, once again Anthony I think the theme when we, we did this week one podcast like two weeks ago we did it early I said the theme of this was that where are the good games because Bills Rams was not on the main slate uh, Bucks Cowboys did not end up being a good game but that was a high over under not on the slate. And that's kind of happening this week, too. I mean, there's a couple 
decent looking games, but overall, 350 uh, total games are not on the main slate. Two Monday night, one Thursday night. So it looks like another kind of just okay slate. Um, I think early look for me, cash game quarterback, Trey Lance sticks out 5,700. He's just too cheap if he's going to run the ball 13 times a game. I don't care how he played in real life uh, because we're playing fantasy football. He's going to run the ball a lot. He's at home. Uh, weather should obviously be significantly better than it was in Chicago yesterday. And other than him, I mean, you could sell me on like that Arizona Vegas game has the highest over under right now that I see posted. That's going to be targeted. Um, and then you have like Lamar. So like Lamar and Trey Lance, I probably that that's probably like the decision for me early. Do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I do. I mean, if you got the money again, it's Monday, right? So we don't know all the value. We'll talk about like the situation ironically in San Francisco, the running back, and there could be a couple others maybe in the Steelers backfield, but you know, taking a first look at the slate from wide receiver to running back. I mean, there's some sexy options that I want this week and, and we'll get to those. So I'm paying down um, to your point. I don't care about week one. Listen, I'm kind of all in on Trey Lance with best ball, even my season long team. We're going to buy uh, on week two here. I mean, if he had a good game and there wasn't weather issues, he'd be, utter mega, mega chalk. I mean, maybe his price wouldn't be at 5,700, but Monday morning right now, you know, I, I think I'm going to pay up elsewhere and play the game that, you know, we have played historically, Ben, and that's pay down at quarterback. I feel like that has worked for us over time. Um, and that's generally, I think, how I'm going to construct my lineup this week, looking at it at first glance. Again, if, if there is a ton of value that opens up, Lamar's probably the guy. Um, Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Yeah, I agree. Um, and like, like I said, we're doing this really early Monday morning. So don't take what we say, like, and just build your lineup and set it and forget it. Like, obviously, we'll have more content coming out throughout the week. Um, so outside of those two guys, like, is there anyone that just sticks out early for like maybe tournaments or pivots? I think, like I said, Derek Carr looks a little bit interesting at sixty two hundred. Obviously, like, you know, Joe Burrow, you can play every single week. Um guy threw four picks yesterday and like they still almost won the game it's just like hilarious but um yeah i think J joe burrow Derek carr i think are, are interesting and there's some other cheap guys too maybe you can make the case for yeah i mean depending on how tonight's game goes russ wilson's probably gonna be you know one of those tournament lineups especially if they score a ton of points tonight you know he'll be a, a hot commodity again it's it's houston i know they looked somewhat okay against indy but um you know, traveling to Denver is no joke playing in the high altitude, especially early in the season when these guys aren't conditioned. They're coming off an overtime game too, right? There's an extra full quarter there. I mean, that stuff does add up, especially early in the year. Russell will probably be popular, but I, man, I got my eye on Stafford. You know, again, talk about like a Trey Lance scenario, not looking good. You know, the public, you know, oh, you know, his arm, it's, it's hurt. I, I get it, but 6,300 against the Falcons, you know, Jameis Winston just lit him up. I, I like Stafford a lot this week. And you're right. Maybe Carr gets popular at that price point. So I don't think Stafford goes overlooked, but that's a guy I'm looking at as a tournament pivot. Yeah, before we move to running back, that's a great call. I was going to bring that up. So the name of the game in week one is trying to get ahead of what people are projecting or like things that you think are mistakes and projections or fragile or whatever, which is kind of like what I did with Justin Jefferson. And then the name of the game in week two is – not overreacting to things that you saw in week one. Everyone saw Matt Stafford. Oh, he's washed. He sucks. Now he's at home against Atlanta on a, you know, obviously basically like a mini bye week after that, that Thursday night game, like they've been off for so long. So I think that's a really good call and someone that uh, I will consider in tournaments. Uh, we can move over to running back here. So something I want to bring up and just get your thoughts on it. Matt and I were talking about this kind of heading into Sunday quite a bit, but it, it kind of seems like to me, and, and to Matt as well, like this is what we were talking about. Like there's very few at this point in the NFL, just true raw workhorse running backs, right? Like it's very, very rare that you have a workhorse running back. And that's why I didn't play Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones got steamed. He was really popular, like heading into Sunday, but I knew that AJ Dillon was going to play a lot. And yes, there was the potential for Aaron Jones to catch a lot of passes, but there was a potential that AJ Dillon played a lot, got goal line carries. And it just shows that there's very few just actual workhorse backs. So I think for me this season, like it's going to be a lot of like four receiver builds. I played four receiver yesterday. Like I could see myself going four wide receivers in cash quite a bit more this year than than 
normal because I think normally we we always go three running backs, but I think that could change a little bit. Um, so I just want to lead into running back with that. That being said, Jonathan Taylor and McCaffrey at the top, you don't need to discuss those guys. I mean, McCaffrey didn't play great yesterday, but that was like a weird game for the Panthers. I mean, they basically got like no first downs in the first half. Like they just didn't have the ball. Um, so I think that's fine. Taylor obviously is a thousand more expensive. He got, a t I mean, he was getting fed early. Anthony um, got a more targets than people expected as well. So I think he's like, if you're spending up, sure, that's fine. Kamara is just no way I play him uh, ahead of Barkley. So Barkley is one of the guys that I think is a, a workhorse running back, right? Coming into this season, played yeah. really well yesterday. He c catches passes. Um, they're at home against Carolina, who the Browns just ran all over, right? Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, like it just seemed like they were running through <clears throat> wide, uh, wide open running lanes. So I think Barkley's a great play. And then the guys at the top, um, what's your thoughts on just the four receiver builds and cash and then like the top of running back right here? Well, it's interesting. I kind of like did a little eye twitch because you're right. I mean, I don't think like that enough. And I feel like we talked about that last year a little bit more, right? The, the drum beat was getting louder on the four wide receiver, uh, you know, play. And I think that's something I need to just tell myself it's okay to do because historically I never do it in cash games. Um you know, and kudos to you. I mean, you kind of made that move last year a little bit more than I did. I did at times, but I do think it's very valid. I mean, you and Matt hit the nail on the head. I felt like that looking at the slate week one. I'm like, man, all these guys, it's like, you know, obviously we live in Cleveland. We talk about the Browns a lot, but it's like, dude, Chubb and Hunt. I don't know. I mean, they're both amazing. I mean, but that's just extrapolating that to basically most of the team. It's kind of, unless it's CMC or Jonathan Taylor. So totally agree with you um, on that. Uh, it does suck that Barkley just absolutely went nuts because just watching that Browns Carolina game a little bit more than, you know, other games on the slate, you're right. The Browns absolutely dominated, you know, in the trenches, you know, Hunt scored twice, but I mean, Chubb looked unbelievable. So I think Barkley's going to go off. I think he's an absolute lock depending on money, you know, CMC still is under 9k. I mean, you got to get exposure if you're making the three max build and CMC and Taylor are not in your cash games. You have to get exposure to one or both in your three max entries. I'll say that. I'll talk about three max entries more and more, like I said, you know, throughout the um, these type of podcasts throughout the year. Uh, as we go down, though, Ben, I do think, you know, just looking at the slate and mentioned in the beginning that we are going to have to pay up at receiver this week. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, again, we haven't even had the Monday night game, but J Javante Williams, 6,500. Fournette's coming off a good game. I don't think people will touch him. They'll be scared of New Orleans. Hunt's too expensive. I do think Gibson could get some run against Detroit at 6,200. He seems favorably priced. Other than that, I mean, you want to talk about the Jeff Wilson scenario, the Steelers backfield, Steelers backfield um, and any other value type plays on the slate that might open up. Yeah, so definitely we'll have to wait and see on some of these injuries. Najee Harris, he could miss, um, but his back, they, they priced some of these backups up. So Najee Harris' presumed backup is Jalen Warren. He's like 54, 5,500. So that's not a crazy discount. Um, Eli Mitchell, presumed backup, Jeff Wilson, he's like 5,100. Um, so that could maybe come into play a little bit more. But I, I agree that Antonio Gibson could get some run in what is expected to be a pretty good game. I was encouraged by by his usage yesterday for them. You know, obviously he kind of ran pure with Brian Robinson uh, not playing, but they did trust him with like a pretty full workload. So agree with that. Uh, Fournette, I think, is fine. Definitely like he has like kind of a workhorse role. Uh, I was really encouraged by DeAndre Swift's role yesterday. He lost some goal line carries to Jamal Williams, but I don't think that you can just declare Jamal Williams as like the full-time goal line back because both times that Jamal Williams punched in touchdowns, it was immediately after DeAndre Swift had just ran them down the field. Like the first drive, he had like a 50-yard carry, so obviously he's probably going to come out after that. And then the other drive in the second half, he had like ran them down the field by himself. So he could have just been like tired and they rotated him in. I don't know. But uh, overall, his usage was good. So pretty much agree on that. As far as like cheaper guys... Outside of the injuries, I don't see anything crazy. Um, I mean, Zeke at 5,900 at home. I mean, he looked decent last night. We'll, we'll have to wait and see kind of how these guys project. 
Uh, and then super gross, like there's no way I play it in cash, but I will mention that Kenyon Drake was pretty much the lead back for Baltimore. Those reports were true. He was lead back. He's only 4,800. Um, so that's pretty cheap, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do at running back right now. Probably getting up to like a Barkley and then maybe one of those other like mid tier guys, I guess. Yeah, that's going to be the popular build this week. And you mentioned keyword. How do things project, right, towards the end of the week or middle of the week? Again, you can just simply go to DFSKarma.com. Again, guys, we provide the projections portal. That's your your value plays, your ceiling plays, your floor plays, and then we spit everything out with the ownership projections as well. So head on over to that. And, of course, if you guys can take a quick pause, like a 10-second pause, go to the YouTube page. If you're not already watching and just give us a thumbs up, like honestly, yeah, the good karma pun intended. We appreciate that. And that helps us out a lot. All right, Ben, let's head on over to wide receiver. Yeah. So this looks really interesting to me off the rip. Cooper cup, 9,900 against Atlanta, uh, Devante Adams, 8,600 against Arizona and Jamar chase 8,000 against Dallas. All three of those guys are a going to project well and just be great plays. Cooper cup, I don't know, man. I, I, as of right now, I don't see how we could really fade this guy in cash games. Like, it's pretty evident that they're going to do what they did last year, and that's just feed him. It's obviously a good matchup. Um, and he was, like, around that price last year, so I don't think that there's really any sticker shock, right? I mean, I think that's probably where he should be priced. Uh, Devontae gets that matchup against, you know, we'll see about the health of, like, the Cardinals defense. They were really banged up already coming into last week, but Patrick Mahomes threw all over him. I don't really see how they're going to be able to cover him at 86. And then Chase, I mean, dude, Chase had a monster game, and that was with he was down at the one, right? He also got a touchdown called back, and then he scored a touchdown that they said was out at the one that didn't get reviewed, but really it was a touchdown on top of him actually scoring a touchdown. So he realistically could have had like four touchdowns yesterday on top of what was already a huge game. And T. Higgins, we'll wait and see, like, if he plays, he left the game for concussion stuff. Um, hopefully he's healthy and he can play next week. But I mean, even if he does, like Jamar Chase at AK is definitely going to be in play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I almost want to get two out of the uh, three or four top guys there, right? I mean, it's kind of inverse of what we've done historically. But again, like you mentioned at the beginning of the pod, I think things are changing these last couple of years in the NFL. Like I besides Jonathan Taylor and CMC, I mean, I just feel like this might be the way to go is just attacking the PPR guaranteed points, let the chips fall elsewhere. Hopefully the mid tier to lower tier running backs are, you know, score enough points. Right. And then the ceiling outputs with the receivers take over um, again, week one, my mistake was not getting enough of that ceiling output at wide receiver. That was a mistake I made in my cash games and ultimately burned me. Um, I think as you go down the board here, I mean, Let's just address Tyreek Hill, I think, surprised most people in DFS, Ben. Would you say agree with that? I mean, I feel like he's in play now every single week. 7,100? I, I mean, what did he have, like 12 targets last week? Yeah, definitely agree with that. We, we were kind of talking about that on the Sunday stream. Like, you could just maybe, like, because a lot of people were like, oh, the Dolphins are going to be super, super run heavy. Well, like, what if they come out and they throw a lot, right? Like, get some of those Dolphins in tournaments banking on the unknown. So I do agree with that uh, 100%. 7,100 does seem... A little light for uh, for Tyreek Hill, yes. Michael Pittman probably going to be again, depending on how the shake the slate pans out. Sixty seven hundred seems fair now. I, I'm not going to call that a value play, but I think that's you know again, you know he's going to get the targets, he's going to soak it up, and he's going against Jacksonville. He's going to be owned, especially coming off a big week. Um, Amon Ron St. Brown, sixty five hundred. I think he's literally in play every week. I talked about him last week. Again, it just depends on the salary construction you know if you're fading these guys up top there is a lot it looks like right now there's a lot of opportunity here um in these middle tier type pricing guys um sutton against houston potentially if he breaks out tonight i could see him getting steamed at 6100 you mentioned we'll have to take a look at t higgins going down the board christian kirk i think is going to be in play every single week until his price moves up even further 5700 seems fair you know, for the opportunity he's going to get there. What do you think about Kurt? Yeah, so I was going to say this 5-6K to 6K tier is absolutely loaded. So Sutton and Judy both, uh, we'll see what happens tonight on Monday Night Football. Both are going to be in play against Houston 100%. Michael Thomas is 5,800. He did not, like, lead the team in targets, 
but he looked like Michael Thomas. He scored two touchdowns, and he's only 5,800. Christian Kirk dominated the target share uh, for Jacksonville. Um, it's clearly like Trevor Lawrence likes to throw to Christian Kirk, and he's 5,700. Uh, Julio Jones it looked healthy on Sunday night football, and now Chris Godwin might be out for this game. He's only 5,500. Like, this tier is pretty loaded. I'm not going to lie. 5 to 6K looks like the money spot, I think, right now. Yeah, I'm just kind of making a basic lineup right now. I, I love this core that I got. You know, Trey Lance, Barkley, Cup, Pittman, Kirk. Now that does not leave nearly enough salary. However, we'll, we'll monitor this slate, guys. And I think already we haven't even gotten a tight end, but I think punting at tight end is going to make a lot of sense this week with no Kelsey there. Um, let's kind of scroll down a little bit further. Um, we are potentially going to be in need. Again, I, I just don't want to go to another punt at freaking wide receiver. But you mentioned Doxon. What, 4,200? I mean, I'm guessing he's probably going to be in play this week. People are going to go back to that well. I might pivot. I mean, you know, I don't want to call him lucky touchdown, but that was a, a week one explosion. Um, hopefully people get on him and I'll be off him. That's just my thoughts this week. I don't think he's a lock by any means. I mean, I think he's an okay price play. It's 4,200. Yeah, I, I just – I think Jahan Dotson is like a really good football player. He – Came out, scored two touchdowns in his first ever game, and they barely moved his price up to forty two hundred. Um, and he only he ran two less routes than McLaurin, so he was on the field a ton. And it was kind of reported all camp that Carson Wentz really likes throwing to Jahan Dotson. And like I know, like I don't think you're like college guy, but when he was at Penn State, like he's just he just gets open like constantly. Um, so I do think he's actually yeah. good and he should be more expensive. So I do think he'll probably be chalky. We'll, we'll wait and see. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to play him or whatever, but now let me ask you this then. Would you play him in your flex? Um, if you like wide receiver cores, all right. Cause that, that changes things for me. Like if I started thinking in terms of that, I just can't, it's hard for me to project him getting in, you know, getting there. Right. Yeah. Uh, I do think he's like, yeah, I, I think four receiver with the way some of these guys are priced five to six, I think, four receivers and play again and i mean dotson i mean like look at the games on the over runners on the slate right 44 40 46 and a half 43 42 44 42 and a half like one of the best games is that detroit washington game it's 48 and a half yeah. right so um and dude detroit's secondary is is not good like it's bad it's gonna it's been bad for years it's gonna keep being bad so it's just a dumb price um that could maybe 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 you play him in cash and then just you know, don't play them in like your tournaments or something like that. I like it. Anyone else cheat in the three K range? No, nah, I don't see anyone sticking out right now. But obviously, you know that could change when projections come out. Like, but we'll just have to wait and see. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens on Monday Night Football too tonight. All right, let's go to tight end. I mentioned earlier again. This was just off the rip, right? Monday. I, I just feel like I'm paying. I'm taking a punt. But go ahead, Ben. I mean, yeah, Mark Andrews is there. I mean. Yeah, I want nothing to do with Darren Waller this week. Just FYI, against that, I feel like they're the middle of that team, that the linebacker core is where you don't want to attack. I know Travis Kelsey just had a great game, but that's just my thoughts off the rip. Yeah, so you had asked me. I didn't play Travis Kelsey in cash on either site. Um, I don't know if, if if anyone's new here. Like, if there's one thing I do, I spend down at tight end, like pretty much all the time, um, and I just don't worry about that stuff. Um, and luckily, Justin Jefferson made up for me not playing Kelsey. But, uh, yeah, we just don't really ever spend up on our main lineup at tight end. It's very rare, I would say. Mark Andrews, sure, um, you know, you can make the case for any of those guys. But I, I think we're dropping down to this other tier. Like, David Njoku's 3,700. He did not play good yesterday, but he played, like, well over 80% of the snaps. He ran a route on all of the... Brissett's dropbacks, I think, except for seven or eight of them. So he was on the field a ton. He just didn't get any looks for whatever reason. I I'll have to go watch and see like why specifically. But I think 3,700 for him is definitely in play as of right now. Albert O is going to play tonight, Monday Night Football. Like, what if he comes out and scores two touchdowns, right? He's 3,700 against Houston. That could be uh, a spot where uh, people want to play him. Um, and there's some other like cheaper guys down here that I think are interesting, but it's pretty clear i think I'll, I'll probably spend down at tight end per usual yeah no i totally agree i mean i don't i really don't have much to add honestly i mean like i said i yeah if you get the money mark andrews cool i mean obviously play him um you know kyle pitts probably does bounce back i mean at 5400 i mean it's 
it's just hard to trust him for cash right now, especially after last week's performance. But he's 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 the easy button play in tournaments and three max. Like that's just like I feel like a lock, especially we mentioned with Stafford earlier. You know, you pair Stafford with two. You know, maybe even go Allen Robinson with Cup or pivot off Cup because nobody wants to play Robinson this week, and then bring it back with uh, Kyle Pitts in a tournament roster. But um, yeah, there's really nobody I want to play. You know, kind of going down, I guess, until I see you know good old David Njoku there. But you know, right now the roster I have made, I already have to make a decision because what I want to play, I just don't have enough money with my my running back slot. Like I, I don't think I can play Kirk Pittman Cup as much as I want it with Barkley. So I'm gonna have to definitely make a decision somewhere this week, and maybe it is fading Pittman because 6,700 is too much, um, and I'll have to figure it out from there. So. Yep, I pretty much agree. Uh, finish up at defense, just quick early look. I mean, we're spending down per usual. Yeah, right? that's I mean, that, man. Let's uh, let's go to defense and wrap it up. Yeah, so we're we're spending down. Um, what? So wait, what? What defense did you play in cash yesterday? Because I made a, another mistake. I had Dolphins like all weekend, and then Sunday comes, and Oof. I'm I'm looking at like other projections and. Washington is just like popping, right? I mean, like like 35 percent ownership projection, and it's like it's yeah. tough not to get sucked into playing that because you're like, if they score a touchdown Washington or too, something, just... yeah. So I don't know. I moved off Dolphins. That was a mistake. Yeah, you're but, done. Yeah. I hate defense. Again, shout out to Owners Box. Like, there's no defense. I just feel like there's so much more of an edge on Owners Box. Honestly, like, there's just they got to get rid of defense. It's just so dumb. It's pure luck, dude. When the Dolphins scored that touchdown. I mean, my day was over in cash games on, on DraftKings. It just it, it ended just on that alone, just that fumble recovery for a touchdown. I got the Bengals slotted in right now um, in this, you know, dummy lineup that I made. So they'll probably be popular. I'm just guessing with uh, Dak being out. But. Yeah, Dak, Dak being out, Bengals will probably be the uh, chalk player, I would assume, yes. So, yeah, that wraps it up, guys. You know, we're already week two. Like we're looking for a, a big bang this week to start the season off absolutely on fire. We didn't mention betkarma.com. Obviously, that's where all of our prop stuff's at, all of our sports betting stuff. There's content there. There's this uh, prop predictor stuff. There's the odds comparison, the live odds stuff. We have our simulations for the spread and the totals now, which is all AI induced. So there's a lot happening over there. And honestly, guys, like you guys know we've done these podcasts for like seven years now. We would just appreciate you us giving us a shot, right? Costs a dollar a day for that stuff um, at Bet Karma. And then DFS Karma, you guys know the drill. Everything's over there for all your DFS needs as well. So that does it, Ben. Unless you got anything else, we'll move forward. And uh, we'll see you guys throughout the week with our content and our Discord chat. We'll be chatting throughout the chat. Yeah, good luck in week two, guys. We'll see you on the other content on the other podcast. Please like the video if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you guys later on this week.